and I'll see you in the next one. We're live. Okay. Okay. We're back. All right. We are All right. back, we guys. Go. Hi, Valencia. Good to see you. I'm just letting everybody come into the room. Come on in. Come on in. We had to start it back up again. So this is the real conversation about poly. And um, I know a lot of you are interested in this topic. A lot of us are having this conversation, and it's important to have the right conversation. Um, with with people that have a healthy uh, mindset because we have so many people talking about it and they don't need to talk about it, right? Right, exactly. So we're um, for before we even get started, I want to let you guys know that we're not really here to have a conversation about your emotions and we're not oh, having no. a conversation with your emotions and Absolutely. we invite critical thinkers only because trust me, I know. Um, this is such a touchy subject. We're not going to even act like it's not. Yeah. And absolutely. the reason why you're even here talking about it already indicates that you've had an experience with it, probably not so great or great, who knows, but it's just important for us to just get this conversation rolling. So let's talk about first why, why so many of us are talking about it. <laughs> well, I think a, a lot of us are talking about it because we want it. We don't understand it also. Um, yeah. And, you know, just out of curiosity, a lot of people are curious. Um, you know, it's it's in many circles, it's like the pink elephant in the room yeah. that's there, but people don't want to address it. I think. Um, and people, I think, I think a lot of people don't understand polyandry. Right. Um, now, polyandry or polyamory? Excuse me, polyamory. Oh, okay. my bad. Okay, yeah, because polyandry is having two husbands. Yeah, you're right. But it you all know. falls under the umbrella of polyamory. Right, Because it's different types of polyamory. Correct. And that's first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so go ahead. I didn't mean to say. Because I think it's very important that we look at these various polys from an indigenous perspective mm -hmm. and not necessarily from a made up kind of Western perspective. Right. right, um, right. Because from a Western perspective, it's about sex. And right. that's what it's about. You know, you want, you know, multiple women because you want to have sex with these women or, you know, for a woman, you want multiple men mm -hmm. for, you know, you want to have sex with multiple yeah, men. It's but about sex. The reality is that it's not about that. If, like when you look into various cultures, um, the sexual aspect is not even mentioned really. Nobody talks about that right. at all. It's, it's just not mentioned. And that's the first thing that people go to, uh, which, and I understand it. I mean, you've been programmed to think about sex. We're in a hyper-sexualized culture right now. That's mm -hmm. all you see is booties and breasts and people having sex and titties and all right. of that. So everything we watch on TV is soft porn pretty much now. So we're all in a sex driven American whorehouse culture is also yeah. what we call that too. Mm -hmm. So I want to jump right in because we didn't want to get in front of you guys too long. This is going to be a brief discussion, but let's jump right in to the first point. Um, poly, polyamory, polyandry, and polygamy is not for you if number one, the number one um, point that I listed was if you have unresolved sexual trauma. Um, so let's talk about that. Unresolved sexual trauma. I saw a video today uh, from Boyce Watkins. It was a very heavy video and it mm -hmm. was talking about, it was of a mother that was beating her daughter right. because the daughter um, said that the boyfriend had molested her. So it was a pretty, I mean, it was a very disturbing video, turned her mm -hmm. stomach um, and it shows uh, so much. But the other thing that um, it pointed out was that we have so much molestation in the black community and a lot of sexual abuse um, that we've experienced and encountered. One out of six young black boys are sexually molested, yeah. and one out of four mm -hmm. black girls before the age of 16 have experienced um, sexual molestation. So when we begin to talk about the subject of polygamy, polyamory, polyandry, anything sexual, anything relationship-oriented, we have to start there. So 
that first point about this is not the lifestyle for you if you have unresolved sexual trauma. Mm -hmm. So let's go into that and why that's so important before you think you want to do poly. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of why we shouldn't do it if you have unresolved sexual trauma, which most of you, you're likely to have it. So mm -hmm. I already know that going in. One out of four of you watching have already experienced sexual trauma. So we know that. So go ahead. Why do we need to do And that? I'd like to add that sexual trauma can, can also be non physical. So it could be your upbringing from some type of Judeo Christian based religion uh -huh. where you know, sex itself is viewed as something that it's not even viewed as something that's sacred. It's really viewed as something that's um, that's evil, mm -hmm, so to speak, mm -hmm. in, in many circles. Um, and that's trauma, also, because for for many people, you know, it, it's like you tell your child not to not to get any cookies or keep your hand in the cookie jar. Mm -hmm. What are they gonna do? At some point, they're gonna go and put their hand in the cookie jar yeah. because it's something that's that's sacred or looked at as not being something that you should do for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And so when you beat that into a child's head, that can become a form of trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily equivalent to the physical sexual trauma, mm -hmm. but it is trauma. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah, I actually, um, that makes me think about when someone cuts off your natural ability to do something that you want to do and they tell you that you shouldn't do it mm -hmm. it's like that's trauma like i had to post about um when we block off if you were told that you couldn't go to the bathroom or use you know a pee or poo if if you had something a natural um uh, function of your body cut off and told that it was wrong could you imagine the type of damage that that would do to you mm -hmm. so it's the same thing like when we are in these circles um with the church because that was the context of the post it's just you see so much dysfunction when right. you have a group of people that are told a natural biological function is wrong. Right, right. And that's and it becomes violent even to your body and to your soul and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. But sexual un unresolved sexual trauma. The first part of the conversation is it's happening to so many of us. And then the next part is it's happening to men and women. So we were talking about something today about um, sexual habits and the whore culture and being a whore and how women think that men, men, men and women both have a reaction to this conversation, but women do particularly because they think that men are already whores. Right. We have a mindset that all men are dogs and they want to fuck everything that's walking. Right. So tell me about that because that is the first um, block people mm -hmm. have with this conversation because they feel like men are just getting off easy and why should we do that because they're whores already so let's talk about that layer of dysfunction and why that's not really me. yeah so you know and this is for both men and women whenever you come across someone who is over sexual you know they're just it's about sex 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 and they have a very deviant sexual pattern mm -hmm more than likely they're suffering from some type of sexual trauma. Something happened because that's not normal behavior. Mm -hmm. And there's something happened in their past that's actually triggering that particular yeah. thing, you know, for the most part. And I can give a personal example for myself. Um, like I was molested when I was eight. And I, I distinctly remember saying two things, that this will never happen to me again and nobody would find out. And so how that played out in adulthood was, especially when I was in college, you know, I had a lot of women, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And because what's the, the best way for someone to, for you to, for a man to exert his masculinity yeah. is to have a lot of women. Yeah. And so that actually hid the trauma, you mm -hmm. know, for me, mm -hmm. so to speak, um, because it was safe. You know, in that way, nobody could ever find out. Or would, not that they would find out. They wouldn't think that I had ever been, you know, sexually violated. Yeah, or anything like yeah, that. yeah. You know, so that's how, you know, it played out for me. And even within the context of relationships itself, mm -hmm. you know, I would be in a relationship and, you know, I could be faithful for, you know, a year or so. Yeah. And then once the woman I was dating got so close, and, and subconsciously, now I want to be clear, like all this was, was running subconsciously, so I wasn't, yeah. you know, consciously thinking about this. Yeah. But I noticed a pattern, like every time a woman got too close, really 
subconsciously I was thinking she was getting too close to my secret. Mm-hmm. And then I would sabotage the relationship. Yeah, yeah. And what's the easiest way to sabotage a relationship really is to go out and cheat. Yes. Because that way yes. the woman would never ask me, you know, why I broke up with her. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the infidelity in the relationship would be the reason why. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I wouldn't be questioned outside of so that. So you created like a little exit plan for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Which some people call it passive aggressive, but you, you had to get out. You right. know, it's the, mm-hmm. yeah, we're escape artists. Right. They call it the escape artist mood too. And I think a lot of people could identify with that because we have a lot of patterns um, and subconscious patterns of self-sabotage that we don't know where they came from. Mm-hmm. That's when we have to start asking those deep questions and taking a look back um, and doing some real inventory and, and tracing the pattern of trauma because everything we do, I mean, a lot of people say that we are only our childhood selves walking around as adults. Right. So mm-hmm. when you when you think about it like that, you have to go back to what what were those things that happened to you because they have um, they shaped who you are. You're carrying them with you now. When mm-hmm. you're talking about Polly bringing somebody in the bedroom, th- this is your un unhealed child like part of yourself. Mm-hmm. You're trying to do that. You're trying to layer on a lifestyle um, on on top of an experience that was traumatic for you. So mm-hmm. that's why when we that wasn't even by, um, I didn't even decide to do that as the first point to put unresolved sexual trauma. It just happened to be the one that I thought about, but it's so good to start there first because when we talk about ourselves as a people, we are so broken. We have the, a lot of sexual trauma and sexual abuse in our black community. So when we're talking about people, one out of six young black boys have been molested. One out of four young black girls have been molested. These are the same people that grow up and want to start having marriages. These become husbands, these become moms, and they become people that are married or in relationships and they start getting bored. And we go to these lifestyles because we're obviously wanting to get fulfillment from somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. We want to get fulfillment from somewhere. And so the natural inclination for human beings to do is to go sexual. So if you even have the interest in this topic, it just means that you're a human being. We're wired this way. And my theory has always been, it's not much of a theory, it's just more of this, um, this is the animal kingdom and this is human nature. We are wired with monogamy and polyamory. We're Mm -hmm. wired and we're programmed to believe we're one or the other when in actual reality, we fall somewhere in the middle and we don't know what to do with that. The, The African in America having to follow these rules is not really working out for our communities right now. It's not working out for us because I saw a brother, um, I forgot the brother's name, but when I started talking about it, I said, um, sister wives wouldn't, ex- I mean, side pieces wouldn't exist if there were sister wives. That was one post, but the brother, oh, it was polyandry. It was about polyandry. He chimed in and he said, well, you know, we act in poly already by behavior, by our behaviors and our habits. We're poly already. You didn't slept with people, you swapping partners, you don't know yeah. who the baby daddy is and all that type of mm-hmm. stuff. It's like um, a really raggedy, <laughs> a raggedy poly without even knowing it. Yeah, it is. Like Rick Ross said, you ain't even know it. Mm-hmm. Y'all been poly, you ain't even know it. Okay, so right now, this is our opportunity to really get the right perspective from this, um, the indigenous way. What is the best indigenous way? How did our ancestors do it? We know they did it. This was the basis of starting family. This is how they created empires, okay? It was from family. So it was a function to polyamory. It wasn't just, um, it certainly wasn't for ego and it was not because it was cool or trend. This was a function. This was just a way of life. So let's talk about that too. Um, The indigenous way, what's the right way to go about poly, and do you feel like we said everything we need to say about unresolved sexual trauma? Yeah, for now. For now, sure. okay. Let's we'll, go to we'll, let's we'll go to um, the indigenous that. way for poly and the history so, of that. I can speak about it from an, an indigenous African perspective, mm-hmm. and this, and when I speak, I'm not speaking for every ethnic group, but this is just more of a generalization. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there are various reasons why. Uh, someone in particular, uh, a man would get into a polygamous relationship. Mm-hmm. And I didn't just demand the, the woman also. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the reasons would be if 
a man and a, and a woman were married, for example, and they wanted to have a large family, say mm -hmm. they wanted 10 children. Mm -hmm. Within many cultures, it is unthinkable for one woman to have 10 children. Like within the culture itself, no one would even think to put that, that type of burden on, on a woman to have 10 children. Mm -hmm. And so what will happen is that the first wife would have maybe three kids, but four probably be the max. Mm -hmm. And then once they get those children, you know, to a certain point, then a lot of times the wife would come to the husband and say, okay, it's time to bring in another yeah. wife. And then they'll bring in another wife. She'll have so many children. And then they'll bring in a third wife and she'll complete yeah. uh, uh, the children and have like 10. Mm -hmm. So whatever that mm -hmm. number is, whatever mm -hmm. that number is for them. Okay. And so that would be a reason to bring in um, a polygamous relationship okay. in, into a marriage. So the right way to do poly. Um, so that's, that is, that's the origin and that's the reason why people did it. So let's talk about um, the right ways to do it, um, and the wrong approach to it. The wrong approach, um, obviously we can have more fun with that because we see a lot of people um, having a lot of desperate attempts with it. I see you trying out there, we're failing. So um, let's talk about the right ways to do poly. The right way to do poly, we, we have to identify the financial aspect of poly and why our ancestors did it. So let's talk about that. And then that'll naturally lead us into the wrong way to do it because that's, that's one component um, that was at the base of, of polyamory, of building those kingdoms. It was actually financial. It was for wealth building. That was for wealth yeah. building. So let's talk about that. So it's for wealth, wealth building. And also I'd like to add, you know, it's, it's very common for, you know, a chief um, or king to have multiple wives because there is a lot that needs to be done mm -hmm. um, within the household and within the community. So there's a responsibility that the wives have to the community as well as they have to their own household. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's so much responsibility. Like one woman, one woman couldn't possibly take on all of that responsibility mm -hmm. uh, at all. So that would be another reason. That's why you see you know within African culture so many chiefs yeah. having multiple wives. But you'll notice that you wouldn't you wouldn't find a chief or any man, period, with like twenty wives. Yeah. You just wouldn't find that because you have to be able to support each wife as you would support one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's we're talking about the right way to do poly because I remember um it was a brother, obviously, he was a Hebrew Israelite, and he was talking about, you know, they stay picking out wives, okay. <laughs> Now I'll drag I'll drag anybody, but you know them Hebrew Israelites, they stay picking out wives and don't have a pot to piss in nor one to throw it out. Now I'm not talking about all the Hebrew Israelites, but you know what I'm talking about. A lot of this we want to get another wife and partner, and you don't have the financial resources to um bring to the conversation, but everybody wants the conversation. But that is um one thing that stood out to me. I, I happened mm -hmm. upon a, a post on Facebook one day and he was talking about how him and his wife were looking for another woman. And I was asking, okay, so what is the financial compensation for her? What what are we talking about? <laughs> you know, yeah. but it's everybody gets real mom and hush mm -hmm. hush. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean when you go to someone else to get their daughter? Hello. Yeah. What are you bringing to that family? You know. So yeah. let's talk about the financial aspect and how the other wife she need to have a house. So you know. Let's, yeah. Let's oh, it down. absolutely. So you know, we don't live in a culture where we build houses or we build homes to expand them. Mm -hmm. We will purchase a single family home first. You know, most people do that. Mm -hmm. And you really can't expand the home because it's not designed that way. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the continent, the how the homes are designed to eventually be turned into compounds. Mm -hmm. so I've noticed. Everyone lives on the compound and each wife has their own section. I know that's compound. right. I know that's right. And so within within Western culture, like if we want to take on polygamy, for example, mm -hmm. then the, the man should be able to afford to buy each of his wives a home. Mm -hmm. On the continent, she would pretty much have a home because she would have a section of the compound that was hers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because you, we, we were smart enough to know you're not going to put 
three or four women under the same roof. Right. You know, they all need to have their own space. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. just for any human being, period. Just having a whole bunch of people in the house, you know, could cause problems anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she needs to have her own space mm -hmm. and space for her children. Yeah. Also. And so each each wife has that. So basically if a man cannot afford to purchase an equivalent home, mm -hmm. not downgrade the second wife and mm -hmm. then downgrade the third wife even more than that, yeah. it, it, it needs to be equivalent to whatever the first wife yeah. has. He doesn't need to enter in, into that type of relationship yeah. at all. Yeah. And not having a home on the other side of town because you always want to live close to your family, so you need to buy a home like across the street, really, yeah, or, or next sense. door. You know, with you know, with them really, really close proximity. Okay. Well, let's talk about um, the wrong, the wrong way to do it. But before we leave it, the um, right way to do it, I want to just say, um, you know, we need to establish what the purpose of entering into a polyamory. Um, polygamous relationship is, you know, that's the first step into doing it the right way is to establish establish why you're doing it. But as we segue into the wrong way, let's talk about um, a, a lot of things that I see people doing. They are entering into polyamorous relationships because they want to spice up their relationship and their marriage. Uh, and at that point, you know, I think I think we really need to take a step back and look at what we're doing because now we're talking about introducing another spirit into a pre-existing bond or union mm -hmm. and that's when it really gets interesting because we are people that are untrained to spirits into personalities into temperaments and so we get into a game that's all about understanding those things so you can't um, expect for it to go well when you don't have the knowledge of, right. of the people and spirits and how to, how to read that going into it so the wrong way to do it obviously like i said is to spice up your marriage because that's not what it's for so let's talk about that for people that want to spice up their relationship let's try some poly well the, the first problem with that is you're entering into a relationship based upon an emotion mm -hmm. and we all know emotions are up and down up very and down. unreliable yeah and then it'll get to some get to some point within a, within a marriage or relationship that the spice runs out then what do you do mm -hmm. at that point mm -hmm. so that would be like a wrong way yeah so to speak to get into you know any type of poly relationship mm -hmm. based upon an, an emotion mm -hmm. and also um getting into a poly relationship without having a viable purpose mm -hmm. like why are you getting into this relationship yeah. how is that going to benefit you how is it going to benefit your wife like, what's the end goal in getting into a poly relationship? Right. And it can't be because I feel like it. No. Or because, you know, that's just what I want to do or because that's in my nature or whatever right. people say. Right. You know, what kind of foolishness they come up with. And it's a lot and, of foolishness. Too. Yeah. It could very well be in your nature. I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but that shouldn't be the driving force that gets you in that type yeah. of relationship at all. And then the wrong way, too, is doing it out of retaliation to infidelity. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. going to say that again. You don't enter into polyamorous polygamous relationships as a retaliation to infidelity because that is a very common um, that's a common thing people do so let's talk about that we don't get into it um, as a retaliation to infidelity because that again smells like doing something as a reaction to an emotion and with this type of lifestyle and with anything you do you need to have a purpose to it and right. we need to learn how to be a lot more in control of our emotions and not be led by our emotions right okay right. And that's what we do yeah. And that's what's taking the strategy away from us as black people. Our power is gone because we're emotionally reactive and not strategic and critical thinkers. So we already know if any of you are awake enough to know in a system of white supremacy, if you're not strategic and you're just ruled by your emotions, you're a pawn in this game. So if you don't have you know, control over your emotions, you're pretty screwed. And if we're talking about the love game and again, life in general, you have to have um, a real good control over your emotions and you can choose how you feel. It's just that we've been programmed with so much garbage. We're, we're, we've given a, been given a narrative as soon as we come out the womb that all men are dogs and you know love hurts. Those, those running loops and um, the feedback you get in your head a lot, you come into the game, love game, all that mm -hmm. with those, that programming. Right. And, and you bring it into your experience. Um, 
but I wanted to, I wanted to just kind of give you some room to kind of talk about that too, um, with people doing it as a retaliation to infidelity and why why that does not work. Because it's an emotion. Yeah, it's still an emotion, nevertheless, and you're you're doing it based upon trauma. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. you know perceived trauma, mm-hmm. really, is what it is. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's not going to work because once the dust settles, where what are you left with? Yeah. At that point. You know, you're, yeah. you're left with whatever emotions you had before and mm-hmm. you're left unfulfilled because it may not have been a type of relationship that you would have gotten in ordinarily mm-hmm. if you weren't in a position of retaliation. Yeah. Because you're retaliating based upon an emotion in that period. Speaking of emotions, the topic of polyandry alone, having two husbands, and again, um, with women too, it, it makes people automatically think, especially with polyandry, a lot of men just got really, really... Um, you know, triggered by that because what people are thinking is when we're talking about doing it the wrong way and I'm going somewhere with this, but doing it the wrong way, talking about the energies you have in your house, most people are thinking of it from when they imagine polyandry not working, they're thinking about it as if two alpha males were in that, you know, scenario. But when you start thinking about the the polyamory um, topic itself, you have to think about the people involved. So the people involved have to match the lifestyle. Correct. Okay. So mm-hmm. if you got two alpha males under one household, of course, when these guys chime in, they're like, no, that would, that would never work. And I don't know no man in their right mind. You're thinking as if it's two alpha charged Correct. males. And of course that doesn't work. And you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you have the right mix and balance of energies, anything can be harmonious. Just look at corporate America. It's a bunch of crazy mofos in there every day that are coming from different walks of life, but it's a system and it's an order and it's a common goal to get a job done and it runs like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. Okay. So talk about those alpha males and how that how <laughs> that cannot work. We're talking about how poly, right. poly not, how poly cannot work. So let's talk about those alpha males and how would that work in a household with well, poly it, Andrew? Well, it, it wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. You know, because you have two alphas and so an alpha always wants to be an alpha. And so within that type of relationship or that type of marriage, and you have two alphas, they'll always be button heads yeah. for the most part because they'll be jockeying for position to be the alpha. Mm-hmm. And the alpha never wants to be a beta. Mm-hmm. And so within that relationship itself, if you want it to work, you would have to have, the woman would have to have two betas. Mm-hmm. You said it's like a male beta fish. I would say, yeah, because I think when I had, you remember everybody had the beta fish uh-huh. and they would kill each other, right? right? Like they couldn't, and they had to even move them away because they would want to, even the sight of another one would make them right. want to fight and they would ram their head up against the glass. Have you heard that too? The beta fish? But that's how it is with the beta fish, she would say. The beta fish. Okay. They were just called beta fish, I think. Yeah. But that's a good point though, you just go ahead. Yeah. So, you know, you would have to have two betas. Mm-hmm. You know, you would you would have to have that, and the woman would have to be willing, and both men would have to be willing to not know who the father of the children are. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. she has to be willing to to accept that, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. will the man. And if you look at, I think in the Paul, um, where um, you have many cases of women with multiple husbands. Mm-hmm you'll find that there's an agreement that's made, you know, between the husbands that whomever is the, I guess, the first husband or they decide how they want this to work. Yeah. He will all, he will be the father to all of the children. Yeah. You know, regardless of whether or not they're kids biologically or not, he's just designated as a father to them all. Let's talk about that as far as the um, the womb is concerned. You know, that womb is very important. Um, What's going on, who we are sharing it with, um, and like I said, we haven't talked, we're not going to talk all night, but the womb itself, um, dealing with it, and childbirth, childbirth, when we're talking about the sister wives and polyamory and polygamy, I think when it comes to childbirth itself, that's another role that you'll have to have established, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and again, every family is different. Every every family is so different. So I think the other thing too that I like to talk about is um, what were we gonna say something? Yeah, I left something. Out. Well, how the woman needs to choose life. Right? No, 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 no. I left something out as it relates to like polygamous relationships. Go ahead. 
and that is like from an indigenous perspective, one of the reasons that they work is because there's a whole ritual performed around that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole ritual performed around that um, in order to maintain peace and harmony in the home, mm-hmm. period. Yeah, so minus the ritual, you just kind of have two girlfriends. Yeah. In a nutshell. Now listen, so let's say that again. For everybody that's just joining us that wants to know, this is the real conversation about polyamory. And the reason why we need to talk about it, because y'all are talking about it, it's the most talked about subject. We mm-hmm. are sexually charged people and we're doing it the right and wrong way. There's not enough people talking about it the right way. But um, so I think I think this is good. I think this is really good that we're yeah. finally getting here. Um, it was something that you said about ritual, because if you don't do ritual entering into a polygamous relationship you just have two girlfriends why is ritual important black people let's pay attention because we think we can just jump into this thing without nothing happening anything you do has to have ritual and i don't care what your religion is but for this the sake of this conversation let's talk about indigenous practices the right way to enter into a polygamous relationship Mm -hmm. so that it can work so let's talk about ritual from that context because within marriage is a ritual anyway Mm -hmm. marriage is a ritual really that's, that's what it is. But within indigenous marriages and including uh, uh, polygamous marriages, um, their rituals perform to, to specifically um, keep peace and to keep balance you know, in the home because you don't want to be in a situation where you have two women and they're just going back and forth all the time. And then you have a total imbalance of, of masculine, masculine energy and mm-hmm. feminine energy. Yeah. And that feminine energy can be dominant. Sometimes. Yes. You know, a man would be sitting there scratching his head like, oh my God, what I got myself into. Yes. So, period. And that, and, and that shouldn't even be the case because when we go back to why you shouldn't enter into a polygamous um, or polyamory um, situation, it's because you're bored with your relationship or you're doing it as retaliation. And also, you can't indirectly move another woman in the house, okay, and just hope your, your chick can go along with it. All right. <laughs> and that. That ain't going to work either. No. She'll be, you know, tripping out and everything. So I think when we're talking about this part, um, it's important to note that the woman, the woman who's been in the relationship um, originally, she needs to choose that mm-hmm. sister bond between the two women Absolutely. and a polygamous relationship. It is vital. Yes. It is vital. Mm-hmm. What you want for yourself, you also will want for your sister. If Correct. it's set up to where it's going to be this other woman I got to get cool with because my husband wanted somebody else, or my man wanted somebody else, that's never going to work. Right. You will never, you cannot start off a sister bun that way in competition. Right. Because there is no competition in sisterhood. And the, the beautiful thing about the ritual, the ritual actually also eliminates that competition mm-hmm. aspect. Mm-hmm. And you brought up a good point because if you are not coming into the marriage or even the, if you're the first wife, you're not in a position to accept that woman as your like your as your blood sister. That's right. That's right. Then it's 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 not gonna work. That's you right. might as well not even, you know, go down that road. For the um sisters that are in the womb school, we're gonna be talking about this a lot more while we're not able to really bond like this, while we can't let in um the concept of how we can really be a village. We can't get to village with all of this stuff in the way, you guys. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this Later on this month, if you're not in the womb school, you need to make sure you're in the womb school because we're going to be bringing in Mommy Wata, who's going to be doing a course, a two-day yeah. course, The Sacredness of the Womb and Its Violation. It's going to mm-hmm. tell you a lot about that womb and why you know it's important to know about it, what you can do to recover and get spiritual renewal after sexual trauma, after cesarean sections, abortions, all types of things that you need to get resolved in the spiritual realm first. A lot of y'all need to start talking to somebody in healthy in a healthy way and getting this off of your spirit. So mm-hmm. we need a whole package, yeah. plan, a healing plan for our people as we mm-hmm. want to build, we want to get abundance, create wealth for ourselves and, and have relationships. We can't start anywhere unless we go to the source, right. the womb. That's why all this is important to men and women. So later this month, it's going to be important for you to come um, learn from this queen mother so you can see what you can do um, in our African spiritual um, techniques that we can do to renew ourselves so we can be fully cleansed 
so that we can go about having healthy relationships the right way. So just tell me a little bit about, tell them too, why they should be there at um, the sacredness of the womb and why all of this is very important and connected. Because it's, it's important because it's, the objective is to return to your indigenous self. Like that's the objective. Yeah. Because whatever we're doing now, we're doing a lot of things. The reality is it's not working. It's not. You know, so why not try something new mm -hmm. and actually mm -hmm. try something that's yours? Yes. Because we're yes. constantly yes. trying someone else's definition of what a relationship should look yes. like, what a marriage should look like. And yeah. it's not working for us. It's not. At it's all. Not. So why don't we just go back to our relationship? And that's not to say that everybody should be in some type of you know, in, in a polygamous relationship no. at all. It's not, no. We're not saying that. This is just a no subject stress. matter today. Because there are men, there are plenty of men on the continent who are not in polygamous relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they don't want other women or they do want other women. It's It all boils down to whether or not he can provide for a, the second wife in the same way that he provides for the first wife. That's right. And if you, you know, want two men, you need to be able to be the boss. And since y'all like to be the boss so much, <laughs> you need to boss up. If you want to be in a polyandry relationship, you got to be the boss because that's the rules of the game. If you want two men, you need to have the resources to provide for both. Is that correct? That's you can't much. be a pillow princess yeah. and just lay back and, and get two dicks and be like, yeah, girl, I'm living my fantasy. I ain't got to do nothing. No, no. It's a responsibility with that. Okay. It's and it's a role with that. So if you come out of your westernized mind, we can see the whole subject matter a lot better and it doesn't have as much emotion around it. And again, I'm glad you mentioned, this is not to say the best way to live your most abundant African life is to be in a polygamous relationship. Absolutely not. You need to be clear about who you are, what you've come into this life and world to be and what your destiny is. And that's what you need to have to guide you. But that's another reason why um, June 17th and 25th is very important. Mm -hmm. We have to go back to what's ours. We need to put ourselves in the right um, frame of mind to accept the wisdom mm -hmm. and get around the right people that can give you that wisdom. Right. Because Pastor Porkchop, Deacon Dumplin, and mm -hmm. all of these people, they ain't told you nothing. And you definitely right. don't want to hear what they got to say because trust me and you, they're not talking about the real things um, that need uh, the dirty little secrets in the black community, which a lot of is sexual trauma, sexual abuse. And the reason why Pastor Nam ain't talking about it because they are doing the abusing and they have been abused themselves. Mm -hmm. OK, so it's hush hush in the church. You're not getting a good, good, um, solid foundation of what this is and what's yours and how to really manage your love life. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the place to be. So mommy Wata, she, you know, just tell them about this sister and, and we can leave off there because yeah. we're going to be picking up on the sacredness of the womb and its violation. A lot mm -hmm. of your wombs are violated out here. Okay. So before we even, you can't even get your head to wrap around the subject because your womb is so damaged. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's go into that. And so what, what she's going to bring to the, to the conversation is how in order we are mm -hmm. and how out of order we are. Mm -hmm. And so there are things that we do that are, we're definitely in alignment. Mm -hmm. And there are things that we, that we do that we're totally to the left. Yeah. I mean, completely. Yeah. It's so far out of alignment. Yes, and, and it's not something major. There's, they're really simple things. Like mm -hmm. our systems are extremely simple. They're not complex mm -hmm. in the least. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us to begin to learn those things. Even as, as a man, it's important for you to attend also because you need to know about your woman. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to help your woman to, to become that indigenous sort of African woman Absolutely. and live her life that way and not like you're a dictator no. because even as a male and at some point we have you know similar lectures or, or, or for, for men also but just to help her um, to stay focused yeah on how she should take care of her womb mm -hmm. because it is extremely 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 important that we do that mm -hmm. you know, and that's one of the things that um, well one of many things that uh, Mommy Watts is going to bring to yeah. the conversation. Mommy Watts is great, guys. I, like I said, I'm very privileged to be learning from her mm -hmm. as well. So I hope you guys got a lot of it. If you're not in the womb school, you should definitely join the womb school. We've got a lot going on this summer, actually. The book is coming out this summer. We're excited and we thank you oh, for yes. everybody 
that's pre-ordered their copy of an mm -hmm. intro to breaking soul ties and mm -hmm. wound cleanse and we got a lot of soul ties to break yes. and we're, we're getting there this is the awakening happening in the collective mm -hmm. we see you this is one of many subjects that we're covering but wound school attendees um, the ladies in the womb school, you'll get to come. And if you're not in the womb school and you want to learn about the sacredness of your womb right. and why and how you can heal yourself, mind, body, and spirit from that mm -hmm. place, if you're dealing with PCOS, fibroids, cysts, and want to bring your whole body back in harmony, you can mm -hmm. start at somewhere like the womb school. There's a lot of people there already that are beginning to do the work. Yeah. So if you want to get in touch with me, if you have any questions about this, feel free. We are so hush hush now. We need to start talking about it. If you want to ask some questions about polyamory and um, polygamy, please send um, Torrance or I a message. We have been getting your messages a lot already. So keep them coming. I think that we are people that enjoy this topic just like you do, but we want to be the, the light in this space of a lot of darkness because we've got a lot of foolishness going on and we need to be, um, we need to bring the people the light in the right way. So I'm glad you guys came out tonight. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to hold you guys too long. I'll see you ladies in the womb school tomorrow. We're going to be doing a lot of following up. It's a lot, lot, lot. We need you guys to get yourselves prepared for If you do have your um, womb cleansing herbs, if you, you're doing your health plan for your element and getting your body, mind, and spirit together, if you're single, if you're trying to prepare yourself to be found for your husband, if you're already in a relationship and want to bring more harmony and peace to the relationship, Join us in the womb school and especially for the June and July classes and webinars. Okay, so anything else you want to leave off on? Oh, absolutely. So I just got excited. And what did you get excited about? Because I'm going to just go ahead and, and kind of let the cat out of the bag a little okay. bit. Okay. Oh, you look scared. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you look like, oh, Lord, Lord. What's the cat? Um, you know, one of the things that we have planned for, like, for 2018 is to have the women we're gonna do this for men also so it's just not, nothing we do is just exclusive for women but we're starting with women um because women are the first teachers and but so one of the things we have planned for 2018 is i am getting my elders together getting some queen mothers together and we're going to have a two week total 100 percent um emerging emergence into uh, indigenous uh, Ghanaian culture in northern Ghana. Nice. Which okay, will give Eunice. the women an Ghana in the house. Yeah. Which will give the women an opportunity to see what it looks like to be an African woman. Yes. What it looks like to even live in a polygamous uh, household. Mm -hmm. Because you'll see women who are in polygamous households and you can't you don't know who who the wife is you right. think they're all sisters yeah the way that they behave you i know would, that's right you wouldn't you couldn't tell the difference unless somebody told you that's uh, so period awesome. and so we want to have that two-week program um it'll be like how to become an african woman yes. what it's like to be to be an african woman so to how really to begin become an african woman right to really begin to um, reset our minds mm -hmm. because we can talk about it all day long. We can experiment, but the best way to to actually learn is through practical experience mm -hmm. and having an opportunity to see it firsthand. Here, like and so it'll be a very exciting two weeks. We have a lot of things in store. Well, that I have. You just said about she's now. excited. You need um, to be excited. That's oh yeah, it's gonna be so a very, 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 very nice trip. It's yeah, we need nice. to get your passports um together, yeah. ladies. And by the time we go over there, a lot of you uh, will already have your wound divinations mm -hmm. and your wound cleanses. So that'll be great to go over there with a renewed sense of self and with some healing under your belt because we want you to go to the continent the right way. Right. Okay, the Honorable Marcus Garvey was very clear. He said, you know, everybody can't come back to the motherland. It, we don't want them. We don't want everybody. So we want to come over the right way. We want to bring, you know, beauty to the motherland. And so we can work on our inner and outer beauty here with the womb school. And I would love to just see you guys get immersed in a culture so you can see what it's like to be an African woman. So I think... 
that's what we all want anyway. So thank you guys for being here. If you have any questions, again, let me know. If you haven't joined the womb school and you want to know more about this topic and other topics concerning your womb, mind, body, spirit, or African spiritual practices, contact us. And we're glad yeah. you guys came out tonight. Yeah, I had a great time talking um, to everyone about this, this topic. Yes. And, you know, we didn't want to have an hour-long conversation. <laughs> and, like, my brain is racing. There's so many things that I left out that, that we could actually talk about. Yeah. And, and go into... So Maybe we can do another avenues. video in a warm school, you know. Yeah. Yeah, very, very, very soon. I'm not going to say tomorrow and get me to lie. Because, no. Chad, we, we just did this video tonight. <laughs> busy working on our womb school. We just got so many great things in store. That's what it is. So you guys have a good night. If we're due to talk this week, if you're a new member in the womb school and um, haven't talked to me yet, we're going to get you all set. Reach out to me. I'll make sure we get you all oriented and then we'll get you guys talking to Torrance so we can get you all together. Get your life, honey. Get your life. Get yes. your life. And if anybody out there who's talked to me, you know I love to talk. Yeah. Shanoa said, oh, Torrance got excited with the oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Shanoa, yes, I, I got very, very, very excited. I love Shanoa. I love all you guys so much. I love my own sisters. Y'all give me so much life. Really, you guys do. So let me get off this thing. Let me get off this phone, girl, before I get into my feelings and my emotions <laughs> about y'all. But I love having these chats, and maybe we can do them more often. Yeah. Um, we'll get down the line. We had those four points of, you know, how we, you know that polyamory is not for you. If you mm -hmm. have unresolved sexual issues, if you are a person that wants to spice up your marriage or relationship, yeah. if you are, um, you have no ability and you don't like to serve others, and uh, what was the last one? It was, um, what was that last one? Yeah, not serving others and low self-esteem and low self-worth. That's the four points that we want to make sure you remember um, leaving off today. So we'll go into those even in more detail in the future. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. And I'll bid you adieu. Love Good you night. guys. Good night. <laughs>